the, the, this is really, in Women's and Gender Studies, about 10 or maybe 12 years ago, when we started developing the undergraduate program, there wasn't an undergraduate program when myself and Lindsay, in fact, came into the department. It was then a program. We felt it was really important that we have a research module because one of the things we were experiencing in the postgraduate is that students were coming into honours and masters with having no research experience. So the idea of this module was to really get students integrated into a research identity. And through the process of running the module, we started over the years to initiate a whole lot of what we think are quite innovative kinds of methods of teaching to further um, get students inducted into being researchers, in being, seeing themselves as people engaged in knowledge production, seeing themselves as part of a process of being part of scholarship, that they're not just receiving scholarship but are actually going to be active agents. So that's one of our, the key goals in this research module. And um, basically, just to kind of give a little bit of background about the, the module, it's a third year research module, it's in women's and gender studies, but it's also a core module for social work students. So in fact, social work, that's thanks to Viv, who used to be in the social work department. Social work students have to do this module as well. Um, so of course there are other students from other departments who also somehow end up in it because it's a third year module. Quite often students just do it as an elective, but it is generally our undergraduate students and social work students and um, they, in this module, will conduct a research project, a small qualitative research project, which they actually do from beginning to end, from conceptualization to writing up the research report. So the idea is that they kind of get the experience of doing a piece of research from beginning to end, even though it's a small piece of research. And in fact, we started off um, getting students to do six interviews initially, Lindsay, do you remember? And we've whittled it down now to two. In fact, Lindsay wants us to do one, but we're resisting. We feel that students should at least do, do two interviews, but we, we, we're in a dialogue about this because an interview is quite a big, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a big activity. But the other aspect of the research which has been very um, innovative, we think, and which has linked to authentic learning principles and through being part of uh, the process of the scholarship of teaching and learning, we've come to realize that in many ways this module does reflect principles of authentic learning. And the last colloquium forced us, and the book that in fact um, Denise and Viv and others are editing has forced us into actually thinking more reflectively about how this module meets that. And in the process we realized new ways and better ways even of making the, the module more authentic. So I think that also for us has been an interesting exercise in self-reflection um, on, our, on our teaching. When you, you read the scholarship, you think about your module, then you rework, then you rethink, and it, just that process of reflection and action and has been very helpful. So, sorry, I went off the point. The key um, thing here is that we began collaborating with one of our colleagues, Kupana Ratele, who used to be in psychology and then women's and gender studies as well, who's now at the MRC and Eunice and is doing work around masculinities, gender, sexualities. So we began collaborating with him and other colleagues in the MRC and UNISA on real research projects so that the module then hinged around collecting data that went towards a larger project. And every year we choose a different theme and students would then actually work within that theme, but we would collaborative, collaboratively work out the research methodology, the research questions, the methods, and so on. So um, this has been quite, a, quite an interesting collaboration. It's also, um, I'll sort of talk a lot more about it as I go along, but it has allowed students to feel even more authentically a part of research because their data links to existing research that's been done, and they're collaborating with real life, so to speak, researchers, ourselves and our colleagues at the MRC and UNISA. But other um, innovative practices that we think the module has included in has been a scaffolding of assignments. So what we mean by that is that students do about five or six assignments and what they, all of these assignments kind of build on each other. So the first assignment is a literature review. The literature review then is repeated about three different times because later on they do a research proposal and the feedback they got on the first literature re review, they then can implement in that research proposal. The literature review then is repeated again in the final research report. 
so they can improve again on the feedback they got. So in this, for most of the components of that final report, students have already been given some feedback. So they've been, and they're working as well, um, with that's the second um, innovation, writing coaches. So we've had student, postgraduate students, um, who in a sense are tutors, but they're working with individual or a group of students, giving them feedback on their writing. So when they've been given feedback from the marker of the assignment, they can then go to the writing coach, spend time working on the actual writing. They will, you know, I don't really know what that, what does that mean? How can I improve that? And kind of in a very, um, or hopefully quite practical way, um, improve the, on the process. And find, um, last year we also initiated an online discussion forum. It wasn't nearly as successful as Lindsay's one, but we, we did gather quite a lot of interesting information from it. And um, we're hoping to, to kind of um, improve that. Um, although this year, because we've got a lack of resources, we might not run the discussion forum. We, we have a blog now. We've set up a blog that will be a, a useful resource. Um, the other thing that we think has been quite innovative has, is the way in which we've worked in the classroom to develop the research methodology. So it's not like here's here's the um, research question, here's the interview schedule, we've actually tried to do this in the classroom. So although we come with a broad title, so this year we're focusing on men, um, young men and active gender activism and um, you know what are the benefits, so it's kind of a question around what are the benefits for men in becoming active in transforming gender, what can men gain from and challenging normative gender roles and gender inequalities. And what we'll do in the classroom is actually re um, collaboratively workshop the research questions and we'll attempt to develop an in, you know, uh, interview schedules together. We'll talk about the interviews, although it has in some ways been preset, there's quite a lot of flexibility within that preset research project. And then finally, quite a, um, a growing, it has become clear to us that one of the things that really works is that in one of our final classes, once students have collected their data and they've started doing their thematic analysis, and generally um, it's qualitative data, so we do a qualitative thematic analysis, um, students are then asked, a group of students who seem to be quite motivated and eager are invited to present their work in the classroom. And we set up a kind of a conference panel-like session. So about five students present their analysis and um, the, the, all the lecturers, as many of us, there have been about two to three lecturers involved in the, in the module come, the writing tutors come to this class and our MRC UNISA collaborators come. So it's a kind of inversion of the kind of, um, um, you know, the lecture authority and presentation to students are now presenting, they're the authority and it's giving students an opportunity to feel like they are in a kind of presentation and they get very nervous. I mean, we have to really try and sort of um, de-stress. Lindsay's very good. She debriefs students before and, and, and after. But it's a, a kind of, it is quite anxiety-provoking. It's a class of over 130 generally. That's around our numbers. And these five students are presenting their work and then getting feedback from the, the, the academic staff and the researchers. And other students also offer and share their, their work. And this has been, I think, a, an important moment in the course. Um, just very, very quickly to go through what the course looks at. Um, it takes um, students through all stages. Now, of course, there are some didactic inputs where we do lecture and talk about, okay, this is how a research proposal looks. But for the most part, we're trying to get students to actively engage with the research. And of course, they're doing the research. Um, I've left out the method of um, data, of our methodology that we use to, to kind of develop this um, analysis of the module um, because of, of time, but generally it was mostly qualitative. We did some focus groups, some interviews. We got the writing coaches and the discussion forum coordinated to write reports and to reflect on their experience. We had a focus group with these writing mentors, which was really helpful. Um, to see, and, and interestingly enough, a, a major spin of which I'll reflect on was that the writing coaches found the module very beneficial for their own postgraduate work. And I think this is always the case when you're assisting other people to write or to do research, you are benefiting in that process. Um, so the key themes that emerge from the data that we've collected, and of course we use the discussion forum as well as a, as a way of um, 
um, collecting data because students shared quite a bit on that, how they found the module and what components were helpful. So just um, the, one of the key themes was the importance of experiential learning, what one could call authentic learning. Um, but it's the researching to learn and the learning to research, actually being involved in doing the research while one's learning about what research methodology is and what research skills are. So the hands-on experience of research from conceptualizing this research project to doing the field work to report writing um, seem to be very beneficial. And so students are not only told about this is what research is involved, but they actually become familiar with the components of a research project. Um, as well as developing research skills, obviously only qualitative, but doing an interview, getting feedback, and what we do in the class is role play interviews so that students get an opportunity to practice and then get feedback. Um, and, and, and our sense is that uh, through this process, students are better prepared for postgraduate study and, and, and life in general because, of course, research skills, interview skills are key components of, of, of many professional careers, which is. Um, um, key to the notion of, uh, you know, principles of authentic learning. Um, just to give you some examples of quotes, um, you, I've highlighted in red some of the things about being prepared for life or professional careers or for honours. And what was quite interesting is that students felt that the actual research um, topic, which of, of course in a sense that knowledge was being used towards developing research skills, but some felt they wanted to carry on researching that in their postgraduate studies and, and further on. So, um, as in this one, I, I think the subject has been interesting. I'm continuing it into my master's thesis. Um, so, yeah, but I suppose to be earlier. Um, there was a sense that this kind of research training really should happen at a very early stage of undergraduate um, studies and not at the third year level. And that, in, you know, we should really be scaffolding that kind of learning right from, from the start. And the other key aspect um, to continue with the notion of scaffolding was the way in which the methodology of assessment um, was shaped, as I explained with this um, kind of doing, repeating aspects in, in, in the next assignment, but also getting feedback at multiple points. So the assignments, the writing coaches, and also the discussion forum, which acted as another forum where one could get feedback. So I'm stuck with this, um, you know, and, and what, what can one suggest? And so, so although it didn't work as well as we would have liked it to have in that sense, it, it, and I think, it, you know, listening to, to inputs like um, um, Michael Rose and Lindsay's, I think one needs to do far more on the discussion forum as a lecturer or as, as a tutor in order to really get the benefits of that. One can't just allow it, I think, to, to develop. It, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it's, it needs to have key moments of, of motivation that I think often need to come from the lecturer or the tutor. Um, so that kind of process allows for regular feedback and time to rework. Um, as this um, student says, I do feel that this course is quite large, a bit like climbing a mountain, but the layout of it is great. I get really nervous every time we get the assignments back, but it does feel better to know that I have more chances to do better. So it's a sense of being able to improve the final product. And the final assignment does now count 50%. So in fact, students can do quite badly on one of the early assignments and still do well at the end of it. And here are just some more quotes on the, the value of those different aspects of scaffolding, the discussion forum, the writing coaches. Um, and this was an exchange student who said, I, um, we don't have access to either writing coaches or the possibility to rewrite assignments after being given comments. So that was found to be useful. And um, similarly this one, otherwise I'm grateful to all the lecturers for keeping an open door policy. I was pleased to hear that because quite often I'm not in my, behind my door for the help from the writing coaches, it must be the other lecturers, and for help from S, the discussion forum coordinator regarding structuring and writing. And the, um, f the discussion forum coordinator who is actually a master's student, well she's finishing her master's in um, in um, adult education uh, reflects that, in my view, the discussion forum rep represents an important space for authentic and flexible learning. But for me, the key benefits and um, a key component coming out of our analysis of, of this module 
is the importance of the induction into a professional research identity. So this kind of quite massive shift in a student thinking of themselves as somebody who is involved in knowledge production, as a scholar. Not a scholar in terms of only learning, but a scholar in terms of producing knowledge. And for me, that's the most powerful um, thing, the value of, of doing a real research project, the fact that the data is real, um, and we emphasize as well the importance of, of thinking yourself into this identity, that you, that in this process, you are becoming a researcher, you are doing research. Um, you know, at the beginning of the module, we always ask students who has done research before, and sort of a handful of students put up, and they're generally the social work students who have done interviews or done a small project before. Um, and then we sort of say, but don't you, you know, have, aren't you curious about things? Don't you think about, oh, what? You know, you look at somebody and you wonder about them and you have questions. And in a sense, you know, kind of to begin with, allow students to reflect on how they are anyway engaged in knowledge production, how they are curious, how they are investigating their worlds, and that this is, um, you know, a process of becoming more formalized, doing research that may contribute to a particular social problem. But in a sense, um, everybody's engaged in, 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 in knowledge production and research. So um, the, the, doing the role research project, though, was very valuable because um, quite, you'll see some of the quotes, the sense of actually doing research that is not going to just be put into a lecturer's drawer, but that is going to go somewhere. And the visits from the outside experts, so to speak, the authors and researchers, like um, Kupana Ratele, is very beneficial. Um, and what um, we always do is get Kupano or somebody else from the project to do a kind of keynote address at the beginning that kind of frames the project. So this time Kupano came to talk about masculinities, young masculinities, and what is the value of feminism and gender activism for, for men, for men in South Africa. And the students were just incredibly engaged and could immediately relate to and identify with the research problem that he was unpacking. So that has been important. Um, so also in that process of the panel presentation and the sharing in class, the locating oneself, the, the student, as expert to in sharing knowledge in that kind of conference-like forum is also an important um, moment for, for being inducted into this identity. Um, and finally, the encouragement to publish. We've kind of got one student publication in press. So a group of students together with C. Sangabaza, one of the lecturers on the module, submitted an article from last year to Agenda, the journal, um, the, the, the uh, Agenda journal in South Africa, the, the longest and oldest um, journal, in fact, on the continent, focusing on gender. And it's in press. So that's also really encouraging, I think, for students to say, well, you know, your classmates last year got a, so please be encouraged to publish. This, this is research. So that kind of shifting the link between we are sitting here learning and other people are writing out there is, quite, I think, quite a profound moment which we're trying to emphasize more. Sorry, and I'm running out of time. So these are just some quotes. Knowing that our result will be used for something more, not just after all hard work, only be read by teachers, then put away, it's very fun. This particular course really connects the theory of research with the practice thereof, but more so this course also combines the political and ideological basis. This is a writing coach, so you can see they're reflecting about feminist pedagogies. Students often leave this course with the wonderful realization that they are able to produce knowledge. So finally, for me, um, what this module does, we hope it does, is challenge the binarism of teaching and research, so that it's not just here's teaching and learning and here's research, but actually we are doing research in the process of teaching and we are also bringing our scholarship to bear on our, on our teachings. So I think this happens in, um, Booth points out, she argues that through inquiry-based programs of education where students and teachers have interchangeable roles as peers, where both teaching and research are shared enterprises. And in the module, this, this happens in multiple ways, which I, I have already unpacked. It's just some more quotes from students. Oh, this is the added benefits for the writing coaches, which I mentioned previously, the sense that how being a writing coach can facilitate one's own progress in terms of one's writing and postgraduate. Am I out of time? One minute. 
So we, we, have, we feel that the module does constitute authentic and inquiry-based learning um, towards the key graduate attributes that we've set for ourselves at UWC, and we hope to do this even more. We've got more ideas and, and to strengthen components that do that. But it's evident also that this kind of program needs a lot more time. And one of the big complaints from students is it's too short, it's too intense, it's too much. Um, so it would be really nice if we could actually run this across the whole year, but there are lots of logistical problems with that. Also in terms of making the writing coach and discussion forum more um, effective, we feel that we need to somehow incentivise that. So we can't just say go on the discussion forum, like Lindsay did making it part of the requirements, I think we need to think about doing that, as well as visits to the writing coach. Because the more motivated students are going to go, they're going to do both of those. Um, but the less motivated students are going to struggle to do that if there's no imperative. Um, we're also thinking about the importance of integrating the writing components that, that happen in the writing um, coach situation um, and, and happen at home in the students' own spaces into the actual class. So maybe um, you know, in the class do free writing kinds of um, exercises where we say, just write up your research questions and share them and then, you know, so, so we get students to actually start writing in class because the writing is a huge challenge. And um, generally to continue to seek innovative ways to inspire students to, to kind of imagine themselves into this role because um, there, there, there's, a, there's a profound moment where one moves from thinking of oneself as a student to thinking of oneself as a researcher and a scholar. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's, um, it's postgraduate students and we've had the same two for about three years, so they've kind of done it quite a lot. The one's a doctoral um, um, candidate and the other was a master's student, or she's a master's student. Um, and really what we, we didn't, um, we, I feel that's an area we could strengthen a lot more, we're spending more time with the writing coaches, but of course the writing coaches are themselves in a process of writing and researching. Um, so what they would do is have hours, and we try to really have as many hours covered during the afternoons as possible, and some during the morning, so that students could have access. And we'd up those sessions during um, the week before an assignment, or the few days before an assignment was due, um, because quite often that's when students would want feedback. And how, they generally would work with one student, but sometimes a group of students, and go, you know, they the student would take the assignment to the writing, coach and you know show them maybe the feedback from the last one and say well you know what is how do I really you know implement that so it would be about working through the the process I've got quite a, we've got quite a lot more data on the experience of the writing coaches because we did a focus group with them and they also wrote up self-reflective reports last year which were really interesting so you just saw a snippet really of the experience but um, I do still feel that one should up that um, process of mentorship and have more writing coaches available and also possibly um, um, spend time with the writing coaches and mentoring them about you know, challenges they might have. But of course it's always resources <laughs> and time and energy. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, um, how big is your class? There are 130 generally, so give or take a few. It's been around that number for quite some years, Lindsay. It's been yeah, for quite a long since the yeah. So it's quite a big surge in time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. But actually, not that we, we. I did document last year because we were we had extra money to do the research, and I think it was something like about 50 students max who actually came to the writing coaches. So not everybody uses that um, resource. And in fact, this year we're we, we shifting it to integrate it into the classes and have it more like tutorials and have a bigger group of, of tutors, really, who would be coaching around writing and the research process. And 
And so they'll have hours when students can come to them, but also, in fact, integrated into the class. So after, because we have a two-hour session, and in fact, the second hour is meant to be a tutorial. And we um, generally have often used that as a lecture or as a participatory, you know, workshopping kind of session. But now we're going to spend some of it on actual in the classroom or moving some. We've got two venues, so we can move some students to another venue. But do quite participatory, active writing in groups with the tutors, and um, and so students will be there. There'll be a captive audience because the. Otherwise, one does have to incentivize it, I feel. Like the students will, only the most motivated will, will come and use the, the writing coaches. And generally, it was evident when the students who presented their work at the end had all been students who had gone to the writing coaches. And in fact, this, they in, in their interviews of, that, that were held, because we held a few interviews with, with um, students, they said things like it was a, that some of them shifted from getting like 50% for the first assignment to 80% for the last. So it, it really could profoundly impact um, on their process if they took advantage of it. Yeah, I was just going to say, why don't you do small little write-shops mm. where it is kind of a writing workshop where you have a writing mm. coach, you can do a, something like a little bit of an input, set up a task yes. and get them to write and even maybe do peer feedback. <coughs> yeah, they do quite a lot of that. Yes. With a writing coach there to facilitate. Exactly. So, because mm. sometimes peers don't always give each other the most helpful yes. feedback. So then at least you've got somebody who's saying, yeah. well, yeah. it's not quite exactly because you know, you've also got a really nice opportunity here where you have people who are in the discipline teaching people how to write in the discipline. So they're yes. not people outside of the discipline yes. trying to understand your disciplinary discourse. Yes. They ask you to understand the disciplinary discourse. So it's, it's also a fantastic That's model of yes. really embedding the writing mm. component in yes. the course and not making it a standalone. Mm. Yes. Can I ask whether the writing <laughs> centre would be able to supply writing coaches and things? Shame she already trained our tutors. I do have a PhD student who's doing a P um, in, in women's and gender studies, but you can't have him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's mine. <laughs> I'm not letting him go. But um, I mean, we could. Yeah, no, no, I think that's what we're trying to do with having these tutorials immediately after the class. So the students can't leave if we end the class early. We actually going to, and it will be structured writing tasks. Um, you know, there's always the challenge, of course, that the writing coaches themselves are struggling with writing, so aren't always the best kind of, um, you know, people to give feedback. But it is the process, and I think one has to have faith in that. Um, and, yeah, so. But it's, it's been quite an exciting process. And I think what I found most interesting is that through being, having a research, you know, being engaged in scholarship, having to write this up in a more scholarly way, I've actually um, gotten more inspired about the module and want to do more things. So this, I think, is the multiple spin-offs <laughs> of doing um, action research. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much.